As I mentioned at the top of the show, protesters are still braving the cold in North Dakota in opposition of the proposed Dakota Access Pipeline. The Army Corps of Engineers suggested a different route needs to be found that doesn't go through tribal lands, but President-elect Trump supports the pipeline and could push it through with an executive order after he takes the oath of office January 20th. And joining us to talk about the pipeline and the protests and what the future may hold is Dr. David Heska Wombly Wyden, the professor of political science and Native American studies at Metropolitan State University. I'm naive to this, so the first question is, you're at a holiday party. Someone comes up to you and says, what's this debate all about? What do you say to them besides, man, this is a boring holiday party? Well, it's really about three things. It's about water, it's about native sovereignty, and it's about protection of sacred sites. So the water issue is the fact that the pipeline is going to pass within two miles of the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation. And it's going to pass directly under the Missouri River and Lake Oahe. And if there is a spill, that will devastate the drinking water for the reservation. So I would say that is the primary issue right now. Then how long, besides before these protests, has this plan been in place and have the schematics been out there? How long has that been going on? It's been going on for a while. Uh, now, it's important to note that the opposition to the pipeline came from not just Native Americans, like myself, but actually from a group of Iowa farmers. Now, they were the first to protest, and these Iowa farmers refused to sell their land to energy transport partners. The company then brought a lawsuit against 23 of them and uh, used the technique of eminent domain to seize their land from them. Now, since then, however, uh, the Native American uh, protest has grown in size, and we have over uh, 15,000 protesters there right now. So w when it comes to eminent domain, locally, we know that when it comes to like expanding a highway, what power does the U.S. have to, to get what, if President-elect Trump wants what he wants, what power do they have for eminent domain to say, we're doing it anyways? Eminent domain is a power that has shifted and expanded in recent years. It used to be that eminent domain could only be used for public purposes, such as schools or roads. But now eminent domain may be used for private developers, and that's exactly what's happening here. So this is just on the honor system right now that the Army Corps of Engineers says, come up with a better plan, we're not going to approve this. But if someone really wanted to go the route of forcing the land through eminent domain, they could still do that? They can, and we have a number of lawsuits that are working their way through the courts right now, and we're not really sure what's going to happen. Now, we know, as you stated, that the Army Corps of Engineers has, in fact, denied the permit, and we're not sure what's going to happen with President-elect Trump. Now, as you noted, uh, he may very well issue an executive order, but there's a different way that this could go. The Congress could very easily issue what we call a rider, and the rider would essentially give permission for the developer to continue construction. And so, in my view, that's what's likely to happen here. Now, that will almost certainly be challenged in court, and so this will ultimately come down to judicial action. So then why, why has this been so volatile with the protesters that don't necessarily have a dog in the fight? They're just going to support their beliefs of what the Native Americans believe also. Why such popularity in protesting? This? That's a great question. And my view is this is the most significant event in Native American events and issues in over 40 years. I believe that there is a new focus upon Native American issues. And I believe that, you know, really the world and the country are drawing their attention upon this. And I believe that we'll see an increased focus upon American Indians and our issues. Is there good of this pipeline? Certainly. Now, what Energy Transport Partners is stating is that we need the pipeline to increase our energy independence. Now, I think it's important to make clear, though, that the pipeline will not create increased drilling. It will simply make it cheaper to transport oil from North Dakota to Illinois. So we don't know that there will be increased energy independence. In fact, paradoxically, it might work the other way because it's so much cheaper to move the, the oil, the crude oil, from North Dakota to Illinois, there may be less drilling. So it's important to keep that in mind. Does Colorado benefit at all, whether it's energy prices, gas prices, anything like that? At this point, we don't know. I would say probably not, but we will see what the future holds. What, what do you predict? What's going to happen after, after January 20th? I predict that uh, President-elect Trump will move immediately to force the Army Corps of Engineers to change their decision. If he does not issue an executive order immediately, I predict that the Congress will act almost immediately. And so I do believe there's a strong probability that the pipeline will be completed in its original route. What does that mean? for? I mean, then you have this protest that ended up 
kind of working, not working? What does this mean for the future of, of supporting Native Americans? Well, again, even if the pipeline ultimately is completed, uh, I do believe that there will be new attention and new focus upon Native American issues. Obviously, we have endured many injustices over decades, and I think it's time that the world moves its eyes upon our issues. If it happens. What's the, you said it could, it could taint the, the water system there. If it happens, that's the worst case scenario. Can you still live appropriately with the pipeline in the original route? No. If, if the water uh, uh, supply for the Standing Rock Sioux Rev Reservation is tainted, then all 10,000 Standing Rock Sioux people will have to move and abandon their homelands where they've been for hundreds of years. So it would be disastrous. Dr. Wyden, thank you for joining us My on this controversial topic. My pleasure. And stay with us. We'll be right back.